Okay. Welcome, y'all. I was waiting for the high sign because they're doing the streaming thing. Uh, and thank you, sir. It, we are here tonight to study from uh, out of the book on pastoral prayer on a praying church. <coughs> and up front, please understand we are quite aware, I doubt very seriously that there's anybody in this room that we're going to teach to pray. That's not why we're here. Uh, Y'all probably got that down pretty good, and I praise God for that. What we hope to accomplish with this, the purpose in, in doing this, is that in reading that book, uh, it was obviously a book focused on, on pastors and helping them improve their prayer lives. And when I first started to read it, it's like, the, that ought to be Jack White name, not pastor. <laughs> So we put the study guide together to uh, hopefully bring all of us into what the book refers to, that God-honoring, world-changing church. And if any church can do it, I really believe this one can. We have some of the most amazing people, some of the most dedicated people to Jesus, and absolutely some of the most praying people I've ever known. Time we put it to work. And that's hope we, what we're hoping to accomplish as we go through this. So thank you for coming. Uh, let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you for this time to come together to grow in you, to, to take this book and your word and really become everything we can be in you. Holy Spirit, we ask you to guide us to, to teach us tonight, to help us grow in you. We ask that you take over, that it be your words that come from our mouths, it be your thoughts and wants that touches our hearts. And we just claim now in Jesus' name that we're going to be that honoring you, world-changing church, and we thank you for the honor and, and the chance to do that in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Has everybody got a study guide and a, a book or access to a book? Doesn't have a book. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Got a book. Okay. Uh, we're going to walk through and just kind of walk through the study guide. If you hopefully kind of follow along, we tried to leave enough room in there for you to be able to take notes if you want to. And if you have questions and you can, uh, try and hold them to the end because we've got an hour we have to end by seven because that's when the streaming is going to end. And we can always stay a little longer if we need to to answer questions afterwards. But if it's something you're afraid you're going to lose or something you feel we need to deal with right then, let us know and we'll do our best. Caveat. I can't guarantee we'll have an answer for every question tonight. But if we ain't got it, we'll sure try and have it by next week. Okay? Uh, so, starting with uh, the study guide. And I just realized we didn't number the pages of the study guide. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, it's chapter one, uh, numer Roman number one, the minister and... Session one, deepening my prayer life. Uh, welcome. There are study guides and books up here if you need one. <coughs> deepening my prayer life. Step one, make abiding in Christ a lifestyle. Uh, can somebody give me your definition of abiding in Christ? Obedience. That's a good one, Darren. Thank you. Anything else to add to that? That's not a bad definition. Yes, ma'am. That's what we do. Yet That is what how we show that we are abiding in Christ. Yes. 
repenting, apologizing when you mess up, that counts too. Uh, going by Jesus' examples, that's where we really get down to the meat. That sure helps. I have found that helps a lot, asking for forgiveness. Yeah. Bottom line. Yeah. Trust in the Lord. That's where it's at, folks. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, that's the other piece. That's part and parcel of what we're going to try and accomplish as we go through this. One of the things the book stresses, if you kind of pay attention, is that a prayer life is more than just a conversation. A prayer life with God is a relationship with God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's what it's all about, folks. That's why we're here and why we want a lot more people here. Because that's where we ought to be. And that seems pretty simple, right? We all pray to God. We all know him. Know Jesus. And here we get fellowship. And that we will get to in a little while because that's a whole other piece of the ball game. But building that relationship with God and being what it can be is really an amazing thing. And hopefully we can all help each other get even more of that and stronger in that than we are. Uh, when I looked up the definition for abiding, what I got basically was just being with permanently. I kind of like that because having a relationship with Jesus, abiding in Jesus, means just that. We will be with him permanently. Uh, not even death can stop that. We will be right there with him. And I'm about y'all, but that sounds like a good place to be to me. Uh, the first, the, the question under that is, are we praying for the Lord to bless what we want to do or for him to show us his plan and our part in it. Well, what's the difference? <laughs> I mean, gee, when I pray to God, of course I'm praying for what I should be, right? I mean, I'm his kid. I'm asking him for stuff. It's the way it's supposed No, no. <laughs> Got to know here. Uh, <laughs> a little more to it than that, huh? Yeah. Not a bad way to do it. Uh, Luke 22, 42, says simply, Father, if you be willing, remove this cup from me nevertheless. Not my will, but thine be done. Now, most of us know the verses around that. Uh, Jesus wasn't just some... You know, lamb ready to be slaughtered that ran out dead. Here, here, nail me up on that cross. Yo, over here. He went to the Lord and struggled with it because it was not going to be fun. He went through probably the singularly most horrible thing that anybody ever has in history. Uh, and there's, I don't know, no better way to put it. He suffered on that cross every sin every piece of garbage that all of us since then have accomplished and nailed him on that cross. Thank God he was able to leave him there. <sighs> but that could not have been easy. And he went to the Father three times and said, hey, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, excuse me. <laughs> if, if it's your will, Father, but if there's an option, and it that is one of the most precious spots in the Bible to me because it showed 
Jesus is humanity, and yet his love of the Father even overcame that. Kind of makes me feel like there's a little hope for Jack White, <laughs> and that's special. Uh, Psalm 143.10 says... Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of the uprightness. That's David praying, what, 800 and some years or so before Jesus? And he knew. He knew who his God was. And even when, like us, he might have made a mistake or two, God was still there. He never forsake him. He never forgot him. But David was always true to him. And he was always honest. <sighs> I have had to learn, and I am still learning, to not get Jack White's will and God's will mixed up. Because I can really feel like yeah, it, 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 I'm right on with God, and I'm praying hard, and I'm upset and wondering why, you know, I, I ain't nothing happening. And all of a sudden, it'll strike, strike me that I need to stop and ask instead of keep telling. And usually, I'm missing the mark somewhere. I've done it more than once, and God always puts me back on track. But it's, I don't know, for me, that's an easy trip to fall into. I can... Well, being honest, get a little self-righteous <laughs> and a little tacky and a little judgmental. And that's usually about the time I get one of these, uh, only it's back in here somewhere. God will get, us, get our attention. He wants us to pray, and he wants our prayers to be powerful and to produce fruit. But to do that, we've got to be in line with his spirit. We've got to know how to pray for the right thing. If it was up to Jack White, just me, Jack White, uh, kind of put God over here for a minute. Uh, remember the Sons of Thunder? Uh, you know what I do to Russia? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> that's not God's way, though. We can pray. We can pray Russia and Ukraine right out of that mess. But it's not going to happen with bombs. And it's not going to happen with hatred. It'll happen with God's love. Because ain't nothing can stand against that. That's where we want to go with prayer. Uh, Ephesians 6.6. 6. Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. That's where it's at. This, <laughs> when I use it the way God made it for me to use, it works okay. Without this, it gets me in trouble every time. Uh Learning to let God take control. Learning to listen to the Holy Spirit instead of opening my mouth first. Uh, I'm not the world's best at it. I'm, I'm, I'm honest. It, he's still teaching me. I think that's one of the reasons I'm up here acting like I know what I'm doing. Uh, we have so many precious folks in this church, people who pray so hard and with so much love. Hopefully by the end of that, we can this, we can bring a whole bunch of us together and start praying the way the uh, apostles did in the upper room. And if you read the outline, uh, they were praying in one accord for days, together, purposely, powerfully. And oh my, when God answered. Folks, we can see that happen here in this church. You want to see this, 
Holy Spirit cut loose here? He can and he will. He loves the people in this church. He loves this church. And if we come together and we stand united before him praying as he bought and has taught us, <laughs> devil better look out. He's going to get in trouble. And praise God for it. Uh, with that, Anybody got any questions or comments that aren't too cruel? No? Okay, in that case, I'm going to turn it over to Mike and let him do the next step. What are some ways that we can deepen our prayer life? It's vitally important that we deepen our prayer life. A lot of us say, yeah, I know how to pray. I can thank God for my meal. I can thank him for this and that. I can ask him what I want. But that's not what we want to do. What we need to do in order to deepen our prayer life is schedule a regular time daily when we pray. We need to have a time that is uninterrupted, a time that we're not hurried. I need to hurry up and pray and get dressed and go to work. Or I need to hurry and pray and go do this or that. No, when we spend time with God, we need to spend time with our Lord and Savior. We need to spend time in prayer. We need to set a time. Prayer needs to be a priority of our daily life. It's vitally important. When we pray to God, Lord, as I start my day, may you be glorified. May you be magnified. That's what we want. Not what I can do and then say, thank you, Lord, I did this. No. God. Show me what you can do through me. And that's what we want to do, not only individually, but as a church. We, as the church, want to make prayer a priority. That's the way we're going to beat the arrows of Satan. That's the way we're going to reach the lost is through prayer. And just like Jack said, we can't stop what's going on in Ukraine. We can't stop Russia. But prayer can. Prayer can stop many things when we give it to our Lord, Jesus Christ. We need to eliminate distractions when we pray. We need to turn the radio off, turn the TV off. We need to go someplace quiet where we can spend time and we can concentrate on God and say, Lord, I'm here. And when we pray, we said, when we pray, when we give him our petitions, then we need to sit there and meditate and think about the things that we have asked him. And we need to listen. We need to sit there in quiet and peace and say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. God, show me what you want me to do. Show me where you want me to go. Show me that person that you want me to witness to. That's what we need to do. God, what you want to Trinity Church to do in the community of Casa Grande. Lord, show us. And then we pray and we think about God, how he teaches us, how he shows us what to do. In Mark 135, it says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before the day, he, meaning Jesus Christ, he went out. And he departed into a solitary place. And there he prayed. He prayed to the Heavenly Father. 
And the disciples saw him do that. And they asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. Show us the way we should pray. And he gave us the Lord's prayer as an example. But when we read that, take time, break it apart. And what it does, what we need to do is we need to recognize who we're praying to. We're praying to the one only true God. That is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God, our Lord and Savior, that's who we're praying to. And then we ask them for our forgiveness where we have failed. Because if we have sin in our life, if we haven't confessed that sin, God doesn't want to listen to us. But he will when we confess. He will hear us. And in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 17, It says, then we shall, who are alive, which are alive, shall be caught. No, that's the wrong one. Uh, let me see here. I got the wrong chapter here. I'm sorry. Here we go. Pray without ceasing. That's what I was looking for. That's what Paul tells us to do. We need to be constantly praying, not just once a day, not just when we get up or whenever we take time to pray. We need to constantly pray, pray without ceasing. I find myself sometimes waking up in the middle of the night, and I'll be laying there in the bed, and I start thinking about Sylvester. I start praising God for my wife who just finished her last cancer treatment. And he answered that prayer that many in this church were praying for. I start thinking of others who needed prayer on our prayer list. Every Wednesday night we have prayer time. I start thinking of those people who need prayer, who need healing. I start praying for our pastor. Those are things that we can pray. But the main focus here right now is when we take time, take time because we love our Savior, our Lord and Jesus Christ. That's what we need to do to have a deepening prayer life. That's one of many points, many ways that we can grow. And I hope that when you read this book, and each time, each area, that you take time to meditate on what God is speaking to you. And as we grow individually, we grow as a church, a praying church. And that's what we want to be. Does anybody have any questions? Any thoughts? I'm going to turn it back over to Jack. But I hope that you will ponder the words that we spoke today and think about them. Thank you, sir. Yeah, what he said. Um, I'm going to digress for just a moment. <coughs> There's something I haven't touched on, and I kind of feel like I need to. It Later on, when we get in a little further in the study, a couple sessions, uh, it's gonna talk, we're going to talk a lot about family of God and being brothers and sisters in Christ and just what that means as far as our prayer life goes. But I want to point something out because... One, I'm getting a little nervous. I, I've known some of you guys for a long time, and it's way too quiet in here. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting nervous, folks. 
but I'm hoping that's because give it, God's giving you something to think about and maybe touching you just a little bit. I pray that. Uh, but we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Our big brother owns all the cattle on all the hills that there is. That's it, folks. And we are all brothers and sisters to him, bought and paid for. Now, that's an amazing thing to me in itself. But think about that for a minute. I don't know how many of y'all had brothers or sisters, but I had a sister, younger sister. She was the baby. She was my daddy's baby. And there was no discussion about that. <laughs> I was the oldest and only son. Now, to put it politely, our relationship with my dad was about as different as night and day. He loved us both. We loved him. But the way we communicated with him, the things we shared back and forth, the things that helped us develop as people were real different. And that's, not, that's just the relationships. And it's something we need to keep in mind as we go through this. Uh, we may be up here and talking away and thinking we're real brilliant, and God may be speaking to you. I pray that he is. But he may be saying, uh, did you notice this verse here? Pay attention to this. When it's not the verse I'm reading, and that's okay. Each one of our relationships with our Heavenly Father is going to be a little different because we're all different people, and he made us that way. That's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Because then when we come together with all those ideas and all those thoughts and all that love that he gives us, good stuff happens, folks. And when we share it, it can be a really powerful and beautiful thing. So yeah, yeah, don't be upset, you know, if God just taps on your shoulder and says, hey, you need to pay attention to this when I'm talking about that. Because he, he's the boss, not Jack White. And I want to make that very, very clear. <laughs> so it, it just a note, don't be upset or concerned if, if God touches you on something as we go through this. In fact, please let me know. Uh, some of the best blessings I've ever got is somebody sharing something. I didn't even know it happened, but God did. So <laughs> any questions, anything touching you? I know that a lot of this for most of you guys is probably pretty basic. Uh, but we need to go through it because when we get to that prayer that Jesus prayed and we start trying to assimilate that, it's going to be good to know where, where our base is and who it is. If nothing, I bet you I'm going to hear about some, some from somebody this week. <laughs> and that's okay. Praise God. Uh, the last point this week we better come up with some discussion. They're, they're going to be awful bored for the last 30 minutes of that streaming. I'm working on it, man. Uh, seek God's heart and mind. We ought to be able to spend a minute on that. I have spent 73 years on it, so and I think I'm getting close. Uh, ask the Holy Spirit to guide my prayers and to pray according to God's wisdom and understanding. That seems pretty simple, right? We all do that, right? I try. Do I always get it right? That's a whole different discussion. <laughs> uh, going to John 16, 13. It says... When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Ooh. What does all does that mean? You ever stop and pull that apart? That's a whole mouthful. Uh... When he, the spirit, the truth has come, or Holy Spirit, he will guide you into all truth. 
Now, think about that for a minute. And think about, if you would be so kind, the world we're living in today. Ah. Uh, the Holy Spirit is speaking to our world, to us, and a lot of folks ain't listening. Yeah, the stuff on the news, the stuff on Facebook, uh, <laughs> the stuff, the stuff. People are sharing absolute falsehoods and lies. It's on the news and calling it fact. Think about that. Uh, The world is turned upside down. Where's the truth? Where's what can you hold on? What can what is there that you can hold on to that we can say this is truth? This is ah. you want to say that again? The Bible. Now I know I know, and I am not up here preaching. If you tell Pastor that, I'll run away. Uh, <laughs> getting all kinds of trouble. <laughs> but, folks, this book right here, is it right or wrong? I can give you an answer. Does it hurt? I can give you an answer. Is it a blessing? I can give you an answer right here. Not Jack White. Please understand that. Please, please, please. Not Jack White. But God's got the answers. And the Holy Spirit will show them to us. We go to God in prayer. And it, it <laughs> Mike was sharing some very, very important things. And it, one of the, it, it, it's kind of humorous because my darling wife and I, who for some reason really believes she loves me, uh, but it, it, we're, we're working on her taste in males. But <laughs> I get up in the morning, we have a little... Uh, devotional time together, and then I go on and do my prayer time with the Lord in the morning. Her, she gets ready for bed. Uh, she'll disappear for 15 minutes, half an hour, whatever, and then she'll come back, and we'll say goodnight, and she'll go to bed. Her time with the Lord is at night. Seek the Holy Spirit. When can you find a spot when you and he can sit down and be comfortable? When you can just talk with him and listen to him. Took me a long time, even as a Christian and starting to mature Christian. I'm one of those thick, right, up here in the school. Uh, he has to work pretty hard to get my attention sometimes. But I had to learn to listen to him. And yeah, it's really not hard. Once I got the hang of it, it was pretty neat. It's just stopping and taking that deep breath. And when you hear that voice, when you see those words, you know who it's from. It's like, wow, why didn't I do this before? Uh, God talks to us. He will answer. One of the hardest things in the world for me to understand was when I prayed for God, I better be ready for the answer. Because <laughs> it wasn't always what I was looking for, being honest. Uh, it's always the right answer. But it's not always the answer I'm looking for. It's the problem with my praying for me is I don't know everything. I can't see everything. I can't even begin to understand everything. But God does. And sometimes I just have to lean on and trust him and know it's going to work out okay. Easier said than done, <laughs> at least by me. But it can be. And it's so amazing when it does. We have such a precious Lord. We have a Holy Spirit that's just sometimes beyond my belief. And he's with us all the time. What Mike was saying, when do we pray? Yeah, that's the right time. Yeah, <coughs> I know I've heard a couple of you guys say something very similar, so I don't feel alone in this. But I have my prayer time in the morning and stuff, and me and God talk, and I try to shut my mouth and listen. But then I'll be out working on a project or making something or <coughs> fixing something that doesn't want to be fixed. Uh, and I'll be, ah, oh, Lord, help. Just, you know, 
Plain and simple. You know, nine times ten out of ten, something will work. Uh, <laughs> even in the, it, it isn't always, you, it, there is that time when I need to be down on my knees. I need to be here. God needs to be here. We're good. But then there's times when it's just help, and he's there. All I got to do is cry out for help. Of course, I got to be ready for the answer, too. <laughs> and it may be, get up off your knees and go do it. But we won't discuss that. It, I wish I could pack into, I wish I could somehow share with you what's in my heart. Because there's something in there that, that is just, it's God, not Jack White. And it just makes me smile a lot. By the way, that is one thing that I really want everybody to understand. This is an option. It is absolutely okay to smile. It's okay to laugh. We have a comment from the audience. <coughs> yes, Madam Lady. You know, we just went through these three steps. And when I was reading the book, I'm like, okay, I read the steps. I got it. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to take one step at a time. So that week, I concentrated on the first step, step abiding in Christ and his word. And then when I felt the Lord told me, okay, it's time to go into the next step, then I took the next step of the, of the steps. And right now, I'm only on step three. <laughs> okay? Um, so it's not something that we have to get all six steps at once so and just let him work through us thank you dear yes sir That's a that's a pretty powerful statement. The, again, the the whole point is seek God's heart and mind. So he he's placing his heart over our heart. And then a couple sentences down, what God has to say in prayer is infinitely more important than what we want to dis discuss. For that reason, you must approach prayer with the desire to learn what is on God's heart and mind. And that's what that verse is in in First Samuel. I rise up a faithful priest for myself. You will do whatever is in my heart and mind. I think these are just beautiful uh, imageries of how we allow God to take his mind and his thought and, and push them into our hearts. We're not convincing him of anything other than listening to what he wants. I think that's a pretty good statement from the audience. What he said. Uh, thank you. <coughs> yes. I, hold on. Uh, you're going to hurt me, aren't you? <laughs> this is a test. I have this strange feeling I'm going to pay. In my recent journey, I've, I've learned to learn to listen and know that he is God. And it's been a real eye-opening. I'm not in control of anything. And as I told my surgeon when I had surgery, um, God's in charge and you're his instrument. And I'm a firm believer that God is in charge of everything. And it's like Pastor mentioned in one of his sermons just recently where he was talking to about the Apostle Paul. If he was killed, that was okay. If he wasn't killed, that was okay too. It's all God's plan. Thank you. Yes, sir. Quite a few years ago, we uh, did a little study, in, on, uh, and I don't remember the title of the book. Bill Hybel wrote this. But one of the, one of the things there that had really stuck in my mind there was a little poem. And it's um, supposed to be Samuel's Prayer. And it's, uh, let me see if I remember it all here. 
Lord, give me Samuel, Samuel Cedar. I want to break down here. <laughs> An open ear, O oh Lord, alive and quick to hear each whisper of your word, like him to answer to your call and to obey thee first of all. Amen. Uh, wow. I am not spinning the wheel, okay? Uh, <sighs> thank you. Already, first, first session out and some real words of wisdom, real words of prayer. It, God is amazing. I will be honest. This wasn't quite what I pictured when I started this, and uh, it's working out pretty good, <laughs> despite Jack White, I think, and I am grateful for that. I'm grateful to you guys for being here. Uh, I feel really dumb standing here if you weren't. <laughs> I thank you. Um, I hope this is blessing you um, and that it's going to bear some fruit, because I believe it's going to. Uh, anybody else got any comments or co yes? Yeah, I hadn't forgotten. I hadn't forgotten. I'm fixing to get in trouble if I don't do it though. Uh, <coughs> did everybody sign the sign-in sheets? I know what. It, it, give me a chance. <laughs> I married to her. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I asked for that, didn't I? Okay, fine. Uh, if you haven't signed the sign-up sheets that gone around, please do so. We just want to make sure that we get everybody and make sure everybody's included. Uh, this is another sign-up sheet. This is for if you are not on the prayer chain now. This lady here is the one who's doing that, and she would love to have you on it. So if you want to put your name and phone number, uh, that's all she needs. I'm going to pass it around, please, uh, if you can, sign up if you haven't already. And if you can, praise God, because that prayer chain seems to be doing some pretty good stuff. <laughs> You're already on it, right? Yeah. Yeah, you are, because I call you all the time. Are you guys on it? How are you on it? Is there anybody that's not on it <laughs> that I don't know about? Ah, okay. Now, that's cool. That's why we do this stuff. We want to make sure it. Yes. Uh, speaking of, and somebody had mentioned, uh, Mike, the other night that uh, we have prayer warriors on Wednesday night and do a little prayer in there. Uh, last Wednesday when we were praying and talking and stuff, and Pastor was there. Uh, by the way, he sent me a message right before we started, just uh, telling it, told me he was praying for us, and to ha it would it was hope this was going to be a blessed time, and God at work, and I'm believing he is. <coughs> but we were talking about prayer, obviously, uh, and how, <coughs> I apologize, stupid sinuses. Uh, people need to see not only us praying, but they need to see results of those prayers. It's important that you know we share when, when God does bless and, and answers our prayers and stuff. And as we were talking about that, we started <laughs> talking about prayers that had been answered and people that had been blessed that we had been praying for. And it's been a bunch of them. We were surprised. Uh, our lady sitting over here, who wouldn't have been here not all that long ago, uh, and is now is back and is helping. Uh, another blessing. <sighs> Folks who are going through stuff, and we have prayed for heart and soul, and they have been healed. I, we got a letter from <coughs> some folks in... I think it was Canada at one point uh, who had been down visiting, had gone and had had some struggles and stuff. We've been praying. And the lady had been healed from 
it was pretty touch and go apparently for a while, and she healed up and sent us a thank you card because they knew they we were praying for. <coughs> we need to remember that we need to share those victories. Uh, sometimes they're little ones. Sometimes they're big ones. <coughs> and as we are seeking God's heart and mind, part of that includes, and we'll touch on this more too in, in I think the next, either next session or the third one, uh, God's timing. Because sometimes it can sure seem it like it takes him a while. <laughs> and sometimes that can be hard. But you know, just keep going. We'll be meeting every Monday night from 6 till 7 for the next six weeks. So we got five more weeks to go. be on the second session. Just follow your guide. You know, it's it's really Im important that not only do we pray for uh, uh, one another, then pray, but it's also a great idea to acknowledge when God answers our prayer. You know, we give him the honor and the glory because when we're praying, we're not praying for ourselves. We're praying for the glor to glorify our Lord. That's the purpose and the reason that we pray. And we sometimes fail. I know even myself, at times I forget to say, Lord, thank you for answering that prayer. And like Jack said, there are some times when we just say, Lord, and even the scripture tells us, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to pray. But that's why God gave us the Holy Spirit. And he, you just say, Holy Spirit, you know my heart. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to pray. That's why I say, just, just say those few words and listen. And then God will s just open up your heart. You know, God's love is so great, so awesome. And as he talked about the verse earlier when Christ said, Father, if it's your will to let me pass this cup, but not my will but your will be done. And at that moment, that's when he was on that cross that our Heavenly Father had to turn his back just for that brief moment because he could not face the sins of the world that his son was taking on the cross. And that's why we come and we say, Father, forgive me. Help me. Help me to grow closer to you. Help me to be a better prayer warrior. Help me to live the life that you want, us, want me to live. And as a church, help us to be a praying church so that we can reach the lost. As we said earlier, it's not for our glory. It's for his glory. Everything that we do is for his glory. And I can tell you personally that if you take the time and really focus and really seek to desire to deepening your prayer time, and as you go through this book, I will guarantee you, if you stick this out through this program, that you will go away not only blessed, but your prayer life will be drastically changed. Because that's what God 
wants us to do. I know when Jack talked to Pastor and, and they talked about it, and then um, they asked me t if I would uh, co-teach with Jack. I've considered it a privilege and an honor to be able to stand side by side by this man because every Wednesday night we sit together with many others. I wished it was many others, a few others. We would like to see more of you there because Wednesday night we pray for these people. And let me tell you, to see the prayers that were answered, to see God at work is a blessing. To pray for that child who needs healing. To pray for that mom who's suffering. To pray for that person who had knee surgery, whatever it may be. It's great to know. And I tell you that it was really a blessing, too, to see Dr. Blackaby to take the time to do that short video. And as he said in that video, if you follow this guideline, let me tell you, your life will change. And we hope and pray, and more pray than hope, because our hope is in nothing less but Jesus Christ, is that not only this church in Trinity, but that other churches in this community would say, I want to see what Trinity Baptist did because their church is focused on a prayer life, on praying for others, praying as a church. What great things we can do in this community through prayer. What great people that we could reach who need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ through prayer. There is nothing greater than prayer. How do you top that? Uh, <laughs> Amen. I, uh, how close are we, Nate? Seven minutes. Okay. Uh, hmm. We have done a, covered a lot, really. At least it feels that way. I hope you guys feel blessed that, that we've accomplished something and it was worthwhile. Uh, I mean, I know the material's good. In question in that. The delivery, all we can do is our best and believe God's got control of things. So as we fix and to wrap up, anybody got anything else or any prayer requests? Yes, ma'am. Hi. And uh, my husband, Douglas Pierce, who came with me, and this is my sister, Blanca. And I just want to say that uh, we enjoyed it, and that's why we came to prayer study, because we wanted to have time to pray for church, because we're looking for a church. And uh, also about prayer, I know I'm from Texas, but we're from Texas. We moved here about four years ago. And I was going to a tremendous church there in Texas, big church. Well, you can get lost, you know, and nobody cares whether you come to church or not. No visit to you or nothing. And I prayed to God because I thought, you know, Lord, I was angry because, you know, we went for a while and then we stopped going. And I thought, well, surely somebody's going to come visit us to see if we can, why we're not coming to church. But nobody did. So I prayed to God and I said, well, Lord, you know, I'm angry because... Even the pastor, the deacons, or, you know, they never came by to see if we were, you know, what was wrong with us. And I waited for a while after I prayed to God, 
And he answered my prayer. He said to me, you can't wait for them. You have to get out there and explore the church. You have to get out there and find you a uh, Bible study. You have to get out there and get involved. You can't wait for them to come come to you. you got to go to them. And that's exactly what I did. So the Lord answers prayer. I'm a good believer of that. And so I just wanted to let you know that, you know, we're here and just praying that you have a good day. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for sharing. (laughs) Amen, brother. Ah, well, that was... A nice awakening. Uh, Yeah. Written a bunch. Thanks. Uh, that is ultimately, and I think we're getting about close enough we can wrap up pretty quick, right? Got it. Uh, <coughs> wrapping up quickly. <coughs> it, w- our hope is to take this, to take the men's prayer time, the the Wednesday night prayer warriors, and build a, or to let God build a prayer ministry that's just going to not only sh- do wonders in this church, but shake Casa Grande and hopefully a whole lot more right on its toes. We want to put God where he belongs, on the throne with us here. And with that... Let's close in prayer, or Nate's going to shoot me. (coughs) Father, we thank you for this time. I I pray that it was glorified and honor you. Thank you for all that was shared, for, for the love for you and for each other. Help us to continue to do that, to grow in this, to, to be everything we can be into you and and to work through this and, and to grow in together in your word and, and through the book. And we pray it and claim it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you, y'all. It's a wrap.